I think there's never only one reason for success to happen. And I think for this Euro uh, in England last summer, uh, many things happened for it to become a success from start to finish. I think the sporting quality was amazing to start with. And uh, it was really a tournament with an atmosphere, a positive atmosphere on and off the pitch that made people want to be part of it. Um, so it was inspiring, it was great to see, it was great how many people came, how many records we broke. To be honest, I couldn't get enough of this. It, it fueled the atmosphere even more. And I think uh, in the end, it's also been a tournament where we, as UEFA, had to uh, step up our game. It's a Euro that is incomparable to what uh, also your team experienced 2017 an investment that costed us five times more than the last Euro, a change really in, in, on every level, but especially also the sporting standards around the teams. And when you invest and when you believe and when you uh, lead, I think then, then, then these are the results. And I, I'm really happy that the world could see women's football on this stage. And I re I'm really happy that we could prove that if we get a stage, people come. The, the other panel was talking about that. Uh, you see more fair play. The the women's soccer has more time to play, more play time, actually. And why do you think that happens? Do you think the football is more pure? Do you think that the women's are more able to to look to the good part of the game? What do you think about that? Of course, we're better in everything. No, <laughs> uh, no, no. I, I don't like to compare the, the men's and women's football question. I got them my whole life also as a player. I think, um, I think it's fair to highlight that women's football on and off the pitch is a very fair environment, a very transparent, very inclusive environment. I don't even know if I can't remember anymore if we had uh, red cards at the Euro or any kind of inconvenient or, or unfair situation. So I think that's something we really um, can be really proud of. I think we also have very invested players that don't always get their life served on a silver plate. They have, know how hard it is to juggle many things in life, school, jobs, etc. So I think players who really also care about their job and what they do. And I think also these values are, are reflected um, in the game. But equally, the fans, I think, really, uh, what we experienced in England and also generally in women's football um, was just really inspiring and not a nice environment to go to and have a good time in. With families. Exactly. Um, but gen generally, I think um, sustainability, that point is very important. We cannot... and. Uh, change or build Rome in one day. Uh, for example, for us, we have uh, changed our youth competitions into a bigger system. We, as I said, the women's Euro is five times bigger. The women's Champions League is on another planet in terms of investment, visibility, brand, uh, etc. Now we're changing for the national teams, the, the, the qualification formats into a new system. And when we do that, we also need to see that these competitions are not just good sportingly for you, for you, for the teams, but that they also, after a while, can be maybe uh, in the future financially self-sustaining. So I think uh, investment is very important, but it needs to be strategic and it also needs to be in line with driving more uh, commercial uh, interest in the women's game in parallel. So um, yeah, that's a little bit the answer. I think sustainability uh, requires many things to happen at the same time. So you, t you, you speak about the, the Champions League. Do you think uh, we we are closer to have another European competition? <laughs> <laughs> See, you just asked me for another European competition. Um, 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 you're talking about the Europa League. Yeah, exactly. League. Yeah. Um, so it is probably half of the answer that I have given. I think from a developmental perspective, UEFA should look at this and will probably look at this also in the next um, strategic cycle. Not for now, because I, as I just said, we soon will announce some other big changes for national team football. Um, and um, then we have to do one thing at, at the time. But um, I think for the future, uh, we, we need to see of how we can grow also club football further. At the moment, 
not all our federations are participating in the Women's Champions League. We have 49 entries. So again, sustainability. It's also our first year, so give us another year to maybe run the competition okay, or two. Okay. Would be nice. <laughs> Uh, so, um, but I think uh, it's a it's a fair question, and but but we for sure will keep assessing the formats and 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 see if if that's a good idea too in the future.